Hi all, welcome to my channel. In this video we will see what are the different core Apache Beam transformation available. We will see one by one with examples. Okay. So as I already discussed in my previous video, we have seen how to create Apache Beam pipelines and also we have seen how to create P collection using different options. Right? We have created P collection using or by reading in memory data and also by reading external data sources. Right. So, as I already told, Apache Beam is a unified programming model, right, for creating batch and stream pipelines. Right. Please go through this URL, so which is, which is explaining each and every concept with examples. Okay. So, in this video, we will see what are the different P transformations, or core transformation, or inbuilt transformation available. Right. So, these are the different categories uh, available. Like we have element-wise transformations and we have we also have platen flattening the data transformation and also how to combine the data for that also we have transformation and also for aggregating the data we do have uh, transformations we'll discuss them individually right so the first thing we will discuss pardo so pardo is a transformation available from beam sdk where if user has to write his own logic his or her own logic then you will be using Pardo, right so next one map 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 is a simple transformation where if you have to apply element wise operations right so p collection is a collection of elements so for our easy understanding just think that each line from that p collection is a element right then we'll apply a transformation on each element and it will try to output exactly one more element right so it's basically one to one mapping right we'll see that in example then flat map flat map means for example let's say there is an element then you will apply a transformation logic then it will output multiple elements right so this is called flat map so it's a one to many mapping right then filter right there are a collection of elements available in a p collection if you have to produce selected elements as a output then you will apply this transformation called filter where you will provide that logic to filter those elements right the next one is flatten flatten is a for example let's say there are two p collection if you have to union both of these p collections basically if you take a sql right if you have to union you will be using union or union or keyword to union uh, the output rows coming from the two sequels it is same thing that means there are two p collections if you have to union then you will have to use this flatten transformation right the next thing is partition partition is a branching actually for example let's say there is a p collection if you have to produce multiple p collection from the single p collection based on some logic then this is called branching right so the next thing is group by key so let us uh, see if I mean let's say if there is a data available group data available based on some column right if you have to do group by that column then you can use group by key that column is gonna be our key right co group by basically to join two p collections then we'll use this p transformation where it will use a common column between these two p collection then it will try to join those two p collection and it will output the joined data or joined p collection okay so in the demo we will see like all this p transformation or core beam transformation with examples right so now let us click quickly go to the demo right so as i discussed in my previous video Apache beam notebook i've been using to demo our concepts right now i have already created a notebook okay for our concepts with examples now we'll see them one by one okay so the first thing is map so before going to these examples let let us try to understand few, few concepts which are related to apache beam pipeline right so this is a driver program I've discussed already uh, this concept in my previous video. Now let us try to understand the P collection. As I already told, P collection is a collection of elements. So, so element is a row, 
inside that p collection right then so in order to apply series of transformation or p transforms on top of this p collection we can use some syntax like this pipe so if you use if you have to apply multiple transformation one by one you can use this pipe as a separator between these two transformation now i'm trying to create a p collection by using create method and then i'm trying to apply this map transformation here you can see pipe as a separator pipe as a separator this is one concept pipe for separating transformation and also labeling the transformation so labeling is for easy understanding in the code also for easy debugging the code for example let's say if something going wrong while running this code then what apache beam will do it will output that label name and it will try to provide that error information along with the label so that it will be very easy for us to debug the code right and also you need to maintain uniqueness of the labeling for each transformation you can't have the same label for two transformation for example let's say if, if i have if i try to use this same name for the next transformation it will throw an error we will see that in uh, upcoming examples okay now the first thing is map map is for one to one mapping you can see this is one p collection here you can see i have some plant information available inside this plate p collection right so this p collection has one row or one line inside it it's a string basically it has different plan names with comma separated right let us try to print this p collection as it is i'm just commenting out this code for the time being now try to print this plant p collection you can see there will be one element available okay now you can see one element this is one right now let me try to apply my map transformation map will be used for one to one mapping as i already told right so here i can produce same elements without applying any transformation and also i can also apply some kind of transformation and i'll try to produce transformed elements here i'm trying to produce same element i'm not applying any transformation though i'm using lambda functionality it will produce the same output here right so there is a syntax error we have to remove this now let me try to run this code you can see the same output one element coming now let me try to apply some transformation basically trying to print length of each element anyway we have one element it's trying to print that length of the element now it should print the length so let me try to run this program now it should print that length now i have transformed the data right from the string to length of the string right so this is how you can apply map it will produce exactly one element for one input element it will produce one output element okay so next thing is flat map so flat map what it will do it will take one element as input and it will produce multiple element as a output now i'm applying some logic inside this flat map transformation where i'm trying to split this line based on the comma separator okay so let me try to run this thing right now you can see we have each plant name right individually displayed this is one element so we have five elements coming from this transformation right from the one element input right i hope you are clear about this concept right so this is the difference between map and flat map so this is one of the important interview question it has been asked in many interviews so usually they ask what is the difference between map and flat map so we'll have to explain like this with some examples so right so one to one mapping and one to many mapping right so now pardo right so pardo is for user defined logic if you have to apply transformation on top of input data with your own logic then you will have to use pardo right as i already told in my previous video beam sdk is providing different ab abstractions right for p collection pipeline right for p transformation right F so it is providing those abstraction in the form of classes for pardo that is providing one class called dofin for pardo so what we will do we'll try to use this base class by using inheritance concept we'll extend this base class and we'll try to 
write our own methods as per the requirement. So, this own met these methods will basically try to apply transformation on top of input data, right. We will pass our P collection to this Pardu. It will read each element from that P collection, it will try to apply our logic. If you see this Pardu transformation, I am reading the P collection, I am taking comma as a separator, I am trying to split that element from the P collection into words based on the comma separator. And also, I am trying to output the word and also length of the word, right. So, there are two things, right. And also, always remember, Pardu may produce one element or multiple elements as output or else based on the requirement it may not it may not produce elements at all it's based on purely depending on the requirement either it can produce output or either it cannot produce output also okay so it's purely depending on the requirement and also you can have multiple pardos based on your requirement within single pipeline now let us try to understand this now you can see I'm, i've been using the same data I'm using the plants data where I have different plants name over here. But if you see this P collection, we have two elements right here. This is one element because one line and this is one more line, one more element. I'm trying to read this P collection element by element and trying to split that based on comma. Now it should produce the words or plant names individually, right? Now let us try to run this pipeline or code, right? Now you can see it is producing the name of the plant and also length of the name here. This is what I am trying to output, right? Yeah, this is how it will work, right? I hope you are you are clear, right? Now, let us move to the next concept called filtering data. As I already discussed, filter means if you have to produce selected data, you will have to apply that filter logic to filter the data and then you will produce the output. Here, if you see, I have collection of elements, I have few numbers then I will like to select only even numbers from the collection of elements, right. So, this will produce this P collection which is having these numbers and then I will try to filter based on this logic. Basically, I am trying to divide each number with the two. If the remainder is 0, it is even number. If the remainder is 1, it is odd number. Then it will produce only even numbers because I want only even numbers, right. Let me run this code. Then this will produce only even numbers. You can see only even numbers are coming. So, this P collection has now four elements, right. Now, we will see flattening, right. Flattening means as I already told to union two P collections, you can use this transformation. Now, you can see this is one P collection I have. I have a country and the population of the country. One more element, same thing country and the population of country, but I would like to union these two, right. So, so for the to do that, this is a syntax where I will have to mention my target P collection, then my two input P collection, then I will use pipe and then apply this flatten, then this will produce that union data, okay. You can see the union data coming from this two P collection, okay. Now, we will see branching. Branching means you will divide a single P collection into multiple P collection based on some logic, right. So, you can see this P collection, this P collection has fruits name in it, all strings. Now, I would like to divide this P collection into two more P collection based on this logic. What, what is this logic do is doing? This is taking length of each fruit, right, or each element and then it is trying to divide that with the two. If the remainder is 0, uh, then it is a even length fruit name. If the remainder is 1, then say all length fruit name, then it will produce two P collections with even length and all length. Now, let me run this code. You can see two P collections coming, fruits 2 and fruits 1 with the even length and the all length, right. Now, let us extend our discussion to understand this partition concept clearly, right. So, now I would like to divide one P collection into four P collections. In earlier case, we have divided into two. Now, I would like to divide it to four. So, here I have taken this example age as example, we have different age as numbers, right. Now, I would like to divide these elements uh, into four groups based on this logic. If the age is less than 20, then it is a teen, then it is a young greater than 1941, then greater than 40, 51 middle, 
else it is old right so it will produce four outputs or four peak collection in this case teen young middle old right so this is the function this function has been defined here based on this function only it is dividing this peak collection now let me try to run this code now you should see four peak collection coming from this code right you can see old young right and also it is outputting the age right now we'll see the aggregating the data what are the different transformation available right first thing is group by key so if the data is available right in the group form for example let's say i have this key a a a a in multiple times so we have multiple rows for the this key right a a and also for bb if you have to group this data based on the, this key for example let's say it's a name then you can do that right so i'm just creating the pick collection and applying this group by key now we'll see how this output look like okay you can see a a data has been grouped like this 1962 and also bb cc right once we have this group data further you can apply some aggregated transformation like sum right or count something like that right i hope you you got it right and the last and final transformation for this video is co group by co group co group by is to join two p collection based on the common key so here we have two p collection we call it as job and habits job is having name as one of the column and also and also hobbies also having the same column name column right this is a common column in these two p collection now we are going to do group by based on this column then it should produce the output with the join data right now let us see for that i have to use this co group by this transformation i'll the syntax is same thing like flatten i'll have to mention two input p collections and then pipe group by key right how it look like let me run this code now you can see john is a name uh, he has two jobs data scientist and data engineer and also these are the two hobbies you can see data scientist data engineer and baseball right and also piano so like that we have other values right this is how you can use co group by right i hope you you are clear about all these concepts so this is part one of this concept like core beam transformation i'm going to upload multiple videos on the speed transformations right so we'll meet in the next video thank you thank you for watching